welcome to Live Life with Jay. Today we have a special guest. Her name is Norma Vargas from Check Your Money Podcast. Norma, tell us about yourself and your what your podcast is about. Well, first, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be on. Um, even though we've already spent quite some time chatting. Yes. <laughs> I thought we should have recorded. Um, but I'm really excited to, to be here and to chat with you. So the Check Your Money podcast, I started basically to like show people who I am and maybe find people who can relate to my previous, you know, like my money story, um, how I grew up around money. Um, and just from a cultural perspective, I wanted to find like-minded people. So that's why I started it. And I touch so many different topics. I try not to really be like in one little area so I can say, oh yeah, it's all about retirement or it's all about, um, I'm also a realtor now. So it's not all about home ownership or anything like that. I talk about, um, you know, like health spending account and retirement, estate planning, um, all kinds of money topics. I just did an episode on uh, your mental health and how it affects your financial health. So Check Your Money podcast really just covers a lot of different topics for a lot of different people. I think there's at least one episode that will resonate with at least one person. What I love about your podcast is um, it does focus on like the Latino culture and community and how we were raised so much differently than you know other cultures like we didn't have that money talk at home and i think that <sighs> we should have had that yes <laughs> but, i think that's um, an episode i want to do too like what do you, what should have you know like what do you think your parents should have talked about when it comes to money because we, like you said we didn't have those money conversations and what i'm finding more and more like in the you know the community that we're in now is that it wasn't just us. Like things that we thought was just us, wasn't just like us. Yes. It, was, <laughs> it was the oh, whole community. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, uh, it's the whole culture. They just don't want to talk about it. That's it. They didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's amazing. So let's. Um, I wanted to. We wanted to focus on something specific. Um, financially empowered and financial independence. Do you have anything specific that you want to mention about it? So I think that it's not just about women. That's number one. I think that there's a, a thought that, you know, when we talk about financial empowerment, that we're only talking about women being financially, financially empowered. And that's definitely important. Um, I think we're kind of behind when it comes to being financially independent and and having financial literacy, I think we're behind men in a way because, again, culturally, we weren't having those conversations. Um, you know, everything was kind of run past the man in the family household, in our type of family household. So there's that misconception that it's just about women, but it's not. You know, I think that when it comes to men, you know, you've got men who won't ask for directions. And so that's kind of how I think about it is that you've got men sometimes based on ego sometimes, and I don't like to make general statements, but I think that oftentimes, like if there's, he's lost, like you're just going to sit there for a minute because <laughs> <laughs> you're like waiting for it to happen. Just yeah. <laughs> and that, and, and the funny thing is I would, I was about to say that even just saying that dates me because you know, we didn't always have ways and, you know, like the thing, you know, what is it, map quest? Like we didn't <laughs> have that kind of stuff. But even with ways, sometimes like, I know my guy will be like, oh, you could turn it off. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I know the rest of the way. <laughs> I'm yeah. ready, no. Like, are you sure you might have turned it back on? No, we're good. This actually just happened like yesterday. <laughs> Oh, no. And I knew we weren't going to get to that Home Depot if I didn't leave with <laughs> And my point is, is that sometimes, again, just there are some gender roles. And for a man, sometimes they don't want to ask for help because they, they you know, they, there's this perception that they have it under control and they don't want to make it look like they don't. So financial empowerment is just as important for men as it is for women. 
for people that who don't know what that means what does actual financial empowerment mean to know what's going on and to know enough to get help to really make your financial situation better is how i would explain it so there are people and not just women so again i don't like to make you know gender statements but there are people who don't really want to be the money person they don't want to make those decisions for the household they don't want to they don't even want to know I and mean, when i first started um, I have a master's in family financial planning, like I told you. The very first class I took was called Financial Theory and Research, and it was a requirement. And I thought this was going to be the biggest waste of my time. I love that class so much that as an elective for my last class, as a matter of fact, I took Financial Theory and Research Part 2. Because... I learned so much about the gender norms, like in our culture. Um, I learned about just even just age-wise statistics with millennials versus Gen Xers versus baby boomers, all that kind of stuff. So once you start really becoming aware of options that you have, then you can become empowered to really implement those, you know, what you're learning and seek more information. And and really the point is, is like, you know, for people that have kids, you know, the goal is always to have your kids have better, you know, have it, have them have it better than you. Yes. I think financial empowerment is really all about the same thing. It's just, just continue to make things better. You know, there's a lot of talk about, um, you know, generational wealth and all that. All of that is comes from being financially empowered because how can I teach my kid about, hey, you should have a will. And when I, I have adult kids, so like I always get told, you don't have kids, you have adults. I'm like, they're always going to be my kids. But mm -hmm. so anyway, they're adults. But, you know, my daughter needs to know, you know, once I start working, I need to make sure I have a 401k in place. Yeah. I didn't know what a 401k was, you know, when I was 20 years old. Like, I wish I knew what a 401k was when I was 20 years old or a Roth IRA. I didn't know any of that at mm -hmm. 20. Anything that I, I knew, I learned on my own, nothing to do with my family. So again, I think, I think it just helps you put, helps you get in a better position and it helps with, with generational wealth. So having that knowledge is what I consider being financially empowered. I feel like too, um, that financially empowered kind of goes into becoming financial, financially independent. Yeah. Um, would you say that that's a difference between the two? So I would agree a hundred percent. So now financially independent, well, I think it does go with it. There's another part to being financially independent that I consider really important and, and my main why. So for me, being financially independent is that ability to say F you. And so I had also heard that term in uh, The Simple Path to Wealth that I recently read. But for me, F you is, I don't need to be in this relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be at this job. I don't need to be in this situation. I don't like this town. I'm out. F you. Like, <laughs> yeah. I've, got, I've got, you know, something set aside so that I could do that. Or I've got a plan in place so that I could do that. And there's too many people who, for whatever reason, they don't want to be bothered with it. Um, or they can't can't be financially independent, can't say F you. And I think there's a, there's a huge power in being able to say F you because, you know, I, and I've, I believe I've told the story in my podcast. I know I definitely did recently, but um, a recently published one. Um, I had a friend in high school, grammar school and high school, whose dad was cheating on the mom. And the mom didn't know English, didn't work, 
didn't have a driver's license and she couldn't say a few. I mean, I'm sure maybe they work stuff out. I don't really know. I don't talk to the girl anymore. But I know they're still married because I'm friends with her cousin. Um, and for me, as a 14-year-old girl, watching that, that's... And it's funny because even when I recorded my episode, I got choked up saying that. But that's that's my why. That's my why. Well, hell no. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, uh uh-uh, not going to happen. I'm going to know what's going on. I'm going to be a part of what's going on. And, you know, I, I, I am going to be able to say a few. Yeah. Um, This is probably a little off topic, but it kind of like, it made me think of, you know, the lack of financial literacy of us growing up. But why do you think that they didn't bring that to us? Is it just, do you think it was just our community they didn't bring it to, or is just not in any school? Number one, it's not in any school. Uh, I did, however, I will say, I went to Catholic school and I took an accounting class and I took a bookkeeping class. So as a senior in high school, I knew how to balance a checkbook. I knew how to write a check. um, And I was very interested in all things money at that point. Um, I think that for people who do have generational wealth, It starts in the home and for us, so like you don't get involved in grown folks business. When the big people are talking, they send you to the room to go, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So like we were never meant to be around those conversations. So why would they talk about something that doesn't concern us to us? It wasn't going to happen. And now we're realizing us, like our generation is realizing the disservice. And I don't necessarily even think that it's because they didn't want us to know. I think it's because they, I know my parents were living paycheck to paycheck. I'll talk to my parents. I'm not going to make general statements. They live paycheck to paycheck. I know that um, there definitely wasn't uh, a will. There wasn't retirement planning. My dad died with nothing. Literally, um, my mom had something at work um, and put it into a Roth. I didn't realize that there was something called a Roth savings. Okay. You just put it under your mattress. Mm -hmm. I've been there for like 10 years doing nothing. And then when she needed to pull out of it, I'm like, mommy, like you haven't made anything. Well, I don't know. I put it in the Roth like you told me. And I like, <laughs> but you know what? Like, I basically said you should put this into a Roth because now I started to learn stuff. Yeah. And that the conversation ended because you don't really talk about that kind of stuff with your parents. So, like, the most I said was you should put it in a Roth. It was kind of like mm-hmm. backed up from there and didn't really give her more information because these are not things that we talk about. Yeah. In my household, we, I don't think the conversation was ever brought up, but I don't think it's because they didn't want to talk to me about it. I think it was because they didn't know themselves. Yeah, I agree. I hear you. Like, it was like probably no clue. So, you know, I grew up more with money fights in the household, you know, um, because they live paycheck to paycheck as well. And it honestly just took me to to read a book. I was 31 years old. (laughs) to read a personal finance book i went through all elementary school middle school high school community college then went to to get bachelor's master's had accounting i didn't learn anything (laughs) except assets and liabilities you know like you needed more detail so like that and still didn't know anything the only thing i knew was my mom did show me okay this is how you write a checkbook this is how you do it she had me open a bank account and she showed me the register book that you keep your transactions mm-hmm. in. That and she was like, you have to open up a credit card so you can build your credit. So that's never even had that. You have more than me. That's that's all I know. I was like, okay, mom. So she got me. She gave me my first credit card. She she's like, here's this. Um, so she got well, not my first credit card. She gave me my first department store card. That's what she did. Which one did you have? Um. The first store card she had me open up was Home Depot. So it was really oh. for her. 
Oh, no, I was going to say, like, I did Sears. <laughs> I, didn't have, I didn't have a house. So it was really for her. So she used it to build my credit. And then Finger Hut was the, the book. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, she did that. And the first couple months of me walking into community college, it was a table. The tables. That's a good one now. Credit card. It was like, sign yeah. up right here. I was like, okay. Mommy said I have to build my credit. <laughs> yep, that's no. a guy. Obama made that. Oh, like it was part of the thing when he was in office. That's against the law now to do that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, but that was you back. You get the free t-shirt and, you know, or the frisbee. Yeah. That was back in 2003. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And that was the beginning of my debt. That's how it started. <laughs> so, oh. it's, yeah, it's. It's crazy. And then you didn't know how to get out of it necessarily. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just had no clue. So how can we achieve being financially empowered and becoming financially independent? Read, listen, read, study, read, study. <laughs> read? <laughs> Podcasts, yeah. YouTubes, reading Everything. books articles there's a money international um sends out i think weekly um newsletters i follow them um there's uh kiplingers learn a lot from kiplingers um they have an online magazine or oh, whatever all magazines are like online now I yeah <laughs> used to get them at the house and like flip through or whatever but um definitely podcasts Definitely, I would strongly suggest that if people are on social media, um, there's this, I'm so excited and glad and proud and every every other word that's a positive word that I found this community on Instagram, like basically like, and I keep saying, you know, like the community, the community, and it's just like, there's maybe a thousand people or so on, on Instagram that posts financial stuff all day long and you will learn so much and if anything it's just a starting point of seeing you know somebody post something about oh i i just deposited whatever i just maxed out my Roth IRA, right and you're like hmm, what's that you know and you start looking you know look into that further so when they do do things that that kind of spark your interest continue to look those things up that's the only way you're going to learn is to to seek the information but the information is literally getting placed on your lap on instagram if you follow up to 20 people yeah. you'll need to know about everything i just stumbled upon probably the last couple months into this community i didn't even know there was more people who wanted to do this stuff so i was like this is amazing it got me excited <laughs> so exciting i told soledad from soledad from wealth para todos she is amazing and she's very very organized um <laughs> what's her name uh janice from yo quiero dinero um she also puts out quite a bit of information um of course jen hemphill from her dinero matters she's amazing she's like the original latina you know, personal finance podcaster yeah um and now for us the iphone users clubhouse <laughs> yeah <laughs> you will learn a lot on clubhouse so if you start getting into these rooms you don't have to talk you could sit there as an audience member unfortunately like i said it's just for iphone users but clubhouse has become the the chat room uh for every single topic you could possibly imagine from real estate to personal finance to um there's a room called para la cultura and it's all things Latinos. Um, I, there was one day they were talking about, you know, do Latinos flirt differently? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I was on the one the other day, actually. I think you wanted to um, about speaking Spanish. Are you Latino? Yes. <laughs> I had to get on there because they call me a fake Latina because my first language is English. My parents also never talk to me in Spanish. The only thing is I understand it because my grandma didn't know English. Yes. So she talks yes. to me in Spanish. I talk back to her in English. And that's how our relationship worked. So I was like, I'm going to listen to this conversation. So I was like, listening to that. I was really interested in that one because um, my daughter has a very ethnic 
I don't want to give out her name, but <clears throat> first and her last name will lead you to believe that she knows a lot of Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so, she does not. Mm-hmm. We're talking about, oh, you should have them listening to music. And blah, like my daughter could spit out every reggaeton song, and every Romeo Santo song, and every Marquette song but she doesn't know anything besides <laughs> the music I, I listen to music. the music yeah I did um I did take like a Spanish 101 to learn to read it so I know read it I can read it but it doesn't mean I understand everything but I can read it because it's easier than English yeah it's easier to read <laughs> I um I actually took business Spanish in college too so there's a couple of words that I learned there that have stuck with me um I also learned um so they said because it was the spanish like from spain version of spanish and so they said you're supposed to address your parents with usted. like that's like a respect thing and my dad's from ecuador so there's things that are acceptable in some even just within spanish culture is so different so there's things that were uh, that are, sorry that are acceptable in some spanish cultures that aren't acceptable in others mm-hmm. totally disrespected him by saying usted like I got trouble. So, um, <laughs> yeah, um, the language is definitely um, a, a sore subject in my household too, yeah. because I didn't teach my kids Spanish at all. I blame the mom. I blame the mom for it. I was like, "Mama, it's your fault." <laughs> also, my kids say, "Oh, it's your fault." It's your fault. You oh, should have tried teaching you. I was like, "You should have just um, taught me Spanish first, and I would have learned English in school." And this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that was really, you know, and that's what, how, how a lot of Spanish households have done it, you know, because that, that's that's just how it's going to be because they didn't know. Like you said, there's, I mean, you had your way of communicating with your grandmother. Like for me, there was no way with my Ecuadorian grandmother, there's no way I would have been able to communicate with her at all. My Puerto Rican grandmother, she knew English. Um, so with her, I, you know, we could do the Spanglish thing. Um mm-hmm. My father was from Cuba. He didn't know a lot of English. He had businesses and stuff, but he really didn't know a lot of English. So mainly for my Ecuadorian grandmother, I had to learn the like I had to speak Spanish. But I think that you know, again, so that's how a lot of us, not me personally, but when I say us, I mean Latinos. So like Latino couples end up being um, translators for our parents, and so again, you're still limited to whatever it is your parents are asking you to you know seek out and then you're translating for the most part it was teachers and whatnot but nobody was going into Charles Schwab you know (laughs) to figure out how to like you know what I mean I didn't even know what that was till last month (laughs) I still everything's on (laughs) e-trade we still got off topic I don't know, but I mean, I think it's, I, again, it, it's when you start to really drill down into, into how did you grow up, mm-hmm. to realize that it wasn't just you and it wasn't just me that grew up this way. There's a lot of us that grew up this way and you start to realize that, hold up, like it's a cultural thing. And so the money conversations that didn't happen in our homes is because because it's a cultural thing. Yeah. And we're now trying to break that that silence and that cycle is so important for for our kids and even for yeah. my sister's thirty five and when she talks to me about money now I'm like oh, you go girl like <laughs> you know what I mean because again we all grew up in the same house even my brother mm-hmm. I'm gonna open up a Roth I keep talking about Roth but just because. <laughs> my mind right now because I got to max it out at like two months and <laughs> but anyway um you know when he talks to me about that kind of stuff I'm like wow like this is this is really exciting that you're thinking like this now yeah because we didn't grow up thinking about these things or even knowing what these things were but I don't shut up about it now both my brother and sister are like they're open to what these things are and how they can improve their situ- their financial situations where they weren't thinking about it 10 years ago. Yeah, it's um so when I first started it was with Dave Ramsey. So <laughs> with what? With Dave Ramsey when I first started. Oh, so. I'm not really a fan. So hold on. <laughs> so when I first started it was like, okay, we gotta do this, 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 this way. So 
So when I so used to tell people, this is what I'm doing, blah, 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 whatever. They, I think that's a point where like, they didn't even want to come to me anymore because, <laughs> because you got to think, and you know, this, I apologize to all the Dave Ramsey community yeah. out there that it's a very yeah. judgmental community. Yes. I was just going to say that. Were you judging? So, yeah, I kind of like <laughs> felt, I guess I was, I probably put that out there. I'm like, but why are you spending money on that? You, you need to do this. You need to do that. You know? So, um, I'm, I, you know, I'm no longer in that community anymore. You're not a community. <laughs> I graduated. I graduated. And I mean, I still like read, I still have a couple books that I want to read of his, but I have, you know, I graduated from a brand new community. <laughs> and I think that even coming into the Instagram, like you mentioned, we got to see other ways to do things. And that was more important. And I feel like that's also why yes. about four years ago, I went to start my YouTube channel mm-hmm. and I recorded a couple videos and never posted it. But if I would have re- officially launched my YouTube channel four years ago, I would have been a very judgmental <laughs> YouTuber. Okay. So I feel like I needed to go through whatever I needed to go through. Mm-hmm. So Your journey. My eyes, yeah. yeah. Open my eyes more, and you know, okay. Now I'm I'm gonna invest and pay off my student loan debt together. You know, so yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. Time is exactly important. like he's so like <laughs> it has to be this way. And I think, yeah. like you said, especially like you know the Instagram community again. Um, you're starting to realize, wait, I, there's another way. Yes. There's another way that isn't, that like, it's not a box. Like, it yes. doesn't have to go into this box. I talk a lot about that, actually. Funny enough, I get this, you know, in my latest season, because because I think that, <laughs> especially with, with, with him, I, I've, I've actually tried to listen to some of his episodes. Mm-hmm. I, I got turned off um, on a particular episode where... Uh, somebody was talking about how to improve their credit. They wanted to know if they should close this credit card. Would it affect their credit or something like that? Oh, but yeah, he won't talk about that though. Yeah, he was like, "Why? So you can get into more debt?" And I'm yeah. like, Ooh. "He's so yeah." So I did, you know, the whole course, and he's completely like, don't have a credit. He doesn't have nothing on his credit. Like it's it's, it's like it's non-existent. So, credit invisible. Yeah. So he won't talk about anything credit. And at first, like my mindset was like, "All right, I don't need credit." Know, but then it's hard because it took me a while to figure out that he's not targeting low income community you know he's more middle income and people who are just don't know how to handle it completely like you don't know how to handle it you know so the foundation when i started with him was great i needed to learn how to budget i needed to learn that i needed an emergency fund because i still didn't even know that and i needed to know what options i had other than that so the foundation was fabulous i loved it it was great but when you start getting more and more oh, into the awesome. this and and like learning new stuff i was like okay it's time for me to to move on so um yeah so i've been trying other stuff right now i'm rich reading um why the rich get richer by robert okay. Kiyosaki. Oh, well, so he, he focuses more on uh Hold on. Right. <laughs> He's focuses more on how the the tax stuff. So he miss he met, he mentions like Donald Trump and why Donald Trump doesn't pay the amount of taxes. So I, was like, okay. I just started reading it. So Rich Dad Poor Dad is part one of that book. So oh, okay, all right, that one I've heard of. Okay, okay. so Rich, yeah, so Rich Dad Poor Dad is a really good book. Um, but again, like all of them, I feel like do not target low income. So like they know. They know broke or poor, that's the word that they use, but they don't know poverty. Okay. So they know broke because I don't know if you, you saw the last- the light bulb, right? Yeah. No, go ahead. Okay. Like, okay. So you the know- light bulb that... is going off. No, the light bulb is going off. Like, I feel like we need to do something. <laughs> so last video of Dave Ramsey went crazy because he was mm-hmm. talking about if you need that- stimulus, The $600? Okay. Mm-hmm. So he was like, I know I've been broke. So I commented and I was like, you know, broke, but you don't know poverty. That's like, you just don't know. Like, so yeah, that, that, I unsubscribe from him. <laughs> well, here's my stance on it. Dave Ramsey or anybody, anybody, like even yeah. Susie Orman, like I've, you know, I've, I have a couple of her books as well. I follow, you know, should I get her new, I still do get her newsletter and I kind of skim through it or whatever. 
whoever it is, if somebody's, you know, if you're the person that they listen to, I'm the person that they listen to, and they listen to a half hour of my podcast, that I don't need them to agree with every single thing that I said. Right. I don't need them to implement every single thing that I said. You know exactly. what? Because three out of the six may not work for you. When you listen to some of these that say, um, the one that, the simple path to wealth, like his suggestion is to save 50% of your income. Sorry, like somebody who's making, let's say $14 an hour, cannot save seven and live. <laughs> yes, That's now we can. To happen. So, but then he did suggest some, you know, like his big thing is the, the VTSAX, like that particular fund. Okay, that was, oh, that's a good suggestion. I could, you know, yeah. look into buying. Now, granted, to get in, it's a $3,000 minimum, but, um, you know, like my point is that you kind of, you need to pick and yeah. choose what is going to work for you. And then you create your own, your own thing that's yeah. going to work. That's it. And that's what I've learned like this past, this, yeah. this past year, I learned that. Like just little by little, whatever is going to work for you. Yeah, and, and that's it. And then you, you make your own thing. You make... You know, yeah. make the you make your own thing. There's no again. There's no box. There's no box that you need to fit into. Mm-hmm. You need to just do whatever works for you. And if writing it down on a piece of paper works for you, that works for you. If every, the every dollar app or one of the you need a budget app, whatever these other apps are work for you, it works for you. I've tried the apps. I cannot. I just I'm I write everything down in my planner. I uh, yeah. I do both. I have um so I do use the app, but I use it for more of like calculation like calculate it for me. Like okay, let me make adjustments. But I still write down everything. I am I'm, I'm old fashioned. <laughs> yeah, same. I, I have I get a planner every year and then I write everything and then I put like I mark my paydays every other week like, you know, yeah. pay, so I know when I'm getting paid and I know when certain bills are coming out and if the bill comes through email, then I like I've got this whole system. If so yeah. it's an email, what I'll do is you know, it'll sit in my inbox until I took care of it. So I know if it's still staring at me, I haven't done anything with it. So what I do is once, you know, I have a day or whatever, I go, okay, there's the light, the cable. And I'll look, some of the stuff is even on auto pay, but I still don't delete the email because I haven't written it down in my book. And I know it sounds crazy, but there's times where I'm like, hmm, I didn't write down Kohl's. And I know Kohl's is usually due like on the 20th. Mm-hmm. Enough, the email went to like archive or something. <laughs> Spam. <laughs> like, see? But like, that's why I have like this method. Because when yeah. I look and I'm like, something's missing. I know something's missing. You know, and, and that, that's what works for me. Somebody else might say, no, crazy, that takes up way too much time. Or, you know. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? That's what makes me feel good. I That's how I budget my money. That's how I, you know, I, I track my money. Mm-hmm. And that's what works for your money. Now, you might have heard all of that and been like, auto pay. I'm going to set myself on auto pay. And that's all you grabbed out of it. The last three minutes of ransom. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. You got something. And now you're becoming financially empowered because you're learning and you're you're taking things that you're listening to and you're, you're implementing them in your life. And you're, 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 you're going to grow from that. Like, you can only grow from that and once you understand what you have going on financially that's that's in my opinion that's how you start to grow yeah i agree i wanted to close out with giving them some tips of financial of how to be financially empowered do you want to mm-hmm. give some tips? you always need to be learning to to grow things are changing first of all tax laws change so you may have been an expert in, you know, I hate to burst people's bubble, especially with this whole 2020 thing. And you guys started to work from home and you thought you were going to expend so your light and your cable. <laughs> I have news for you. If you're a W-2 employee, you're not going to do it. If you're a 1099 employee, then you can deduct those expenses. But again, if you don't continue to stay up on these things that affect your life, these laws that affect your life. You may not have known that because I've gotten quite a few calls saying, I could deduct my, you know, part of my mortgage, right? And I'm like, W-2? Yeah, no. (laughs) 
summer. Um, so if you're more of a listener, I suggest podcasts. I suggest eBooks. If you can tolerate sometimes the narrator, um, I suggest, you know, you, you stay on top of things that way. Mm -hmm. If you like to be on social media, I suggest that you start following financial literacy, social media accounts. So if you're on Instagram, um, there's quite a few, just Dr. Hans, that's it was the wealth, the investor, what was his name? I think it might just be Dr. Hans, but he does a lot about, inv oh, the investing tutor. Um, I think that's what it is. Now I have to think about that. But anyway, I think it's the investor, but anyway, I follow him. And he talks a lot about investing. Uh, there's definitely quite a bit on social media um, that you can that you can follow that will teach you either about let's say college planning that'll mm -hmm. teach you retirement planning that'll even the foundations I feel like the foundations of just budgeting and getting into that yes setting budgeting financial, setting financial goals yep that's really important that's my point so there's foundational stuff mm -hmm. you have that foundation then yes. you move on to the bigger stuff and that's my point like that's how you become empowered and independent. You will learn how to budget. Okay, so now I have this extra money. Now what? Question. <laughs> like, glad you have, yeah. Then like, what's <laughs> next? Do you do you have an emergency fund? All right, let's go. Let's, let's get to it. <laughs> yes, and you start learning the steps. You start like, oh, I have a savings account. Well, now we know savings account, emergency fund. You know, like mm -hmm. parents, they like, oh, you know, I have money and whatever. You know, whatever their savings account, the mattress, you know, whatever. Mattress. <laughs> this is great information this is great information we're gonna close out because i don't know how long it's been <laughs> <laughs> I don't it's, so, it's, I say. it's so weird um but i want to thank you for coming on for saying yes to being on here and giving us some of your knowledge this is so important thank you for um, me uh, for those of you who are watching, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to put Norma's information on the screen and in the description. Go follow her podcast and also on Instagram is by the same name. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Thank you.